Bill O'Reilly here, Monday, June 8th, 2020. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Democrats in Minneapolis move to dismantle the police department. The Washington Post retracts yet another anti-Trump hit piece. 80% of Americans say the country is spiraling out of control. New York City emerges after three months of quarantine. The National Basketball Association unveils its plan to bring back pro basketball. Also ahead, you are being deceived about the race protests. But first, the Minneapolis City Council voting to replace the police department with a, quote, transformative new model, whatever that is. Congressman Ilan Omar agrees, saying, quote, it's time to disband the cops and reimagine public safety. In Los Angeles and New York City, the far-left mayors are slashing police budgets. All of this, of course, will put mostly poor people in danger. The Washington Post correcting a story claiming President Trump labeled last month's strong jobs report a, quote, great day for George Floyd. In fact, the Washington Post now admits that was wrong, saying, quote, Mr. Trump was referring to growing calls for equal justice under the law. A new poll from the Wall Street Journal says 8 in 10 Americans believe the USA is out of control. 75% of Democrats say it will take a full year for the country to return to normal, compared with a third of Republicans who see it coming back quicker. U.S. voters now rank covid the economic recovery, and race relations, the top three issues heading into the election. New York City returns to work for the first time in nearly three months. The Big Apple entering phase one of Governor Cuomo's plan to reopen the economy, allowing construction, manufacturing, and some retail jobs. COVID has killed 17,000 people in New York City alone. The NBA announcing plans to resume the season, officials and owners agreeing on a tentative start date of July 31st. 22 teams will compete at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. The location will be used to house players, staff, host games until October. Everyone in the NBA will be subject to virus testing and temperature checks. In a moment, race protests, the real story. Right back. A former White House economist says there's a 100% chance of a recession and predicts 1 million jobs will be lost in April. So many Americans are moving to physical gold and silver as a recession proof safe haven for their retirement. American Hartford Gold Group is a trusted leader in gold and silver, and they make it simple and easy to get started. They're family owned and have an A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Very important. Until you hold a precious metal in your hand, you'll never fully know the experience of being in control of your own retirement. If you are listening to me right now, the American Hartford Gold Group is offering new clients up to $500 in free silver. All you have to do is give them a call, 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD, or text SILVER to 65532. Please call the American Hartford Gold Group now, 877-444-4653, or text SILVER to 65532. Time now for the O'Reilly Update. Message of the day, the truth about the race protests. As we reported, America lost a huge opportunity to unite against racism and unfair practices towards minority citizens. Almost all of us believe the police killing of George Floyd should never happen again. But the story was quickly hijacked by militants led by Black Lives Matter. Here's the truth. Fifty years ago, the Black Panther Party reached its zenith. The Panthers used the Vietnam War to call for the overthrow of the American system. Some Panthers used violence, attempting to destroy the system by killing police officers. The movement was led by socialists and communists like Bobby Seale, Elridge Cleaver, and Angela Davis. 
The Panthers failed, but destroyed lives and property in the process, a lot of them. Today, the Black Lives Matter organization is doing the exact same thing the Black Panthers did. It is using the terrible death of George Floyd to ignite a revolt which would change the American system on all levels. The media is largely enabling Black Lives Matter, sensing that the chaos will hurt President Trump's re-election chances. Here's a quote from the Chicago chapter of Black Lives Matter. We work to end state violence and criminalization of black communities by deconstructing white supremacist capitalist patriarchy, unquote. But in Chicago, 2,500 African Americans have been murdered since 2015. Black Lives Matter has not said a single word about these homicides. Nothing. No protests, no press conferences, nothing. That's because most of the African Americans murdered were killed by black men. So I guess in Chicago, black lives don't matter all that much, at least to Black Lives Matter. It is horrifying to see millions of dollars being donated to Black Lives Matter by corporations like Pepsi and Airbnb. Remember, the Black Lives Matter march a few years ago was anti-police. The chant was, pigs in the blanket, fry them like bacon, a blatant call for violence against the cops. The media will never tell you the truth about Black Lives Matter. That's because the national press is corrupt and frightened of them. But this is an ultra-dangerous, violent organization, which has received $33 million from the despicable far-left zealot George Soros. So now you know the truth about what's happening on the streets of America. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve that message by researching it and writing it. For more news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com for honest reporting. In a moment, something you might not know. Two guys, Kyle and Josh, were both losing their hair, which was no surprise to either, since they knew male pattern baldness ran in their families. The way they dealt with their hair loss, however, couldn't have been more different. Kyle put it off, losing more and more hair. Josh went right to Keeps.com to learn how to keep his hair. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. The genetic versions saved Josh a lot of money, and the consultation was simple. He answered a few questions online and snapped a few pictures of his hair. A doctor then evaluated everything and recommended the right FDA-approved hair loss treatment for Josh. It was shipped discreetly to his door. Keeps lets you save your hair without ever leaving your home. Please go to Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash bill to get your first order of Keeps hair loss treatment 50% off. Half off. That's Keeps dot com slash bill. Keeps dot com slash bill. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp was brutalized by the media six weeks ago when he announced his plan to reopen the state at the height of the pandemic. Atlantic Magazine described the decision as, quote, an experiment in human sacrifice. The Washington Post said, quote, Georgia leads the race to become America's number one death destination. Kemp is proposing to offer a new nonstop service to the great beyond, Washington Post, unquote. So what exactly happened? Here is the current COVID situation in the Peach State. More than a month after reopening, the curve in Georgia remains flat. New infections slightly down. On April 27th, 84 Georgia residents died from the virus. That number dropped to 27 on June 3rd. Just 6% of hospital beds in Georgia now occupied by pandemic patients. 
To date, the contagion has killed 2,200 across the Peach State, compared with 24,000 in New York. Georgians also back to work. Jobless claims down four weeks in a row. The state unemployment rate about 12 percent, three points less than the national average. Cameras are once again rolling. More than 400 TV and movie productions have resumed in Georgia. That industry brings $10 billion in each year. And here's something else you might not know. Governor Kemp's decision to lift restrictions was panned by almost everyone, from the liberal mayor of Atlanta to President Trump. Said Mr. Trump in April, quote, I disagree strongly with his decision. I want him to do what he thinks is right, but I disagree with him on what he's doing, unquote. While other leaders across the country have seen their approval ratings rise in the age of COVID, Governor Kemp's numbers are actually down, if you can believe it. Just 43% now support the governor's plan to fight the pandemic by not locking down, even though that plan was correct. Back after this, Reopening America safely is everyone's responsibility, and no one believes that more than our friends at Real-Time Products. In fact, they're helping businesses and organizations by giving away a free automatic dispenser with a purchase of two gallons of real-time hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer dispensers are available in wall mount, floor stand, or countertop, so customers, employees, parishioners, anyone can dispense the sanitizer safely. Real-time hand sanitizer contains 70% alcohol, and you'll never need another hand sanitizer supplier. Real-time hand sanitizer formulated and packaged in the USA. To claim your free hand sanitizer dispenser, please go to GetSanitizerNow.com. Don't assume a business or organization you frequent doesn't care. They're probably having trouble getting sanitizer. So spread the word that Real Time has dispensers and gallons of sanitizer available right now. Do your part. Get sanitizernow.com. Get sanitizernow.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you. <laughs> 